peep this one, or should I say peep this word of mouth? We're here in season three with another episode, and we got some things to speak about. I have wise, efficient, the Jantes in the building, Makaya's here, and I don't care how they feeling. Let's go. I just want to say we made it so far. But we didn't make it that far without you guys. So remember to like, comment, subscribe. Hit us in the comments. What else should they do? Listen, you remember? Turn on the notifications. Yes. Turn on the notifications. But one thing I wanted to say, bros. Y'all, y'all, say it, man. Say it. Season three, we had a lot of things that we got planned. Got planned. And we want to continue to remember that you guys are HR department. HR department. So keep us in check. I want them to shout out to the HR department. I want them to timestamp any sort of. Why are you smiling, bro? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, man. It, it ain't me. That's all I'm saying. It ain't me, yo. No, yo. I want somebody to put a timestamp uh, when Dejounte eventually does something HRable. Wow. And if not Dejounte, I know it's, it's gonna be me. He, oh, he admitted it without My a personal doubt. Personal accounts are getting flagged. Oh man. I have no idea why. In sync. It's gonna be me. I'm not. Wow. <laughs> All right. Um, Cancel. <laughs> Already. Cancel. It's gonna be me. Uh, Copyright. Um, so what is the answer. quote of the day, bro? Quote of the day is from Maya Angelou. Okay. And the queen has said, What is a fear of living? It's being preeminently afraid of dying. It is not doing what you came here to do out of timidity and spinelessness. The antidote is to take full responsibility for yourself, for the time you have, for the time you take up and the space you occupy, occupy. If you don't know what you're here to do, then do some good. Mm. My Angela. Quite a mouthful for my Angela. Yeah, she could talk. Miss Maya could talk. <laughs> what made you choose this quote? <laughs> you know so what? Why? I like how you said that. I like how you said that. Interesting. What it's, made you choose this quote? Why? You know, what did um, you think about? I was, ta- I was talking to my um, my neighbor, Carlos, and he's an ex-Marine and whatnot, and traveled through Panama and whatnot. We were talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. different art and literature out of the black culture, brown mm-hmm. culture, and, mm-hmm. okay. you know, Celia Cruz and other people. And then I was like, you know what? But this one, I had to go to her because there's this fear that we all move with. Like, hold on, hold on. What is that story? You were talking to her, oh, then you just went back to the yeah. court. You got to make yeah. it next time. Sorry. Come on, so man. It held you accountable. It did. It did. So Carlos and I were really talking about, like... Um, one fear that he had mm-hmm. when we were, we were talking about in Panama was like just the stress of like the guns and everything, the ammunition, because wow. it was old and he was a spy, yeah. but he was also, because wow. he knew many languages, so he would do a lot of interrogation around the world, travel. Interpreting. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so we, um, we were talking a lot of history, and he loves to talk history, so as we're talking history, he's just talking about everybody through Latin culture and through that place, and then the different part of uh, who was inhabiting before the Aztecs got down to Mexico. That whole culture of people. Okay. The, so then the clown or something. So then I'm what sure. made you grab the quote from Maya Angelou? The Maya Angelou yeah. was, um, it was really coming up, just him talking to him earlier, but it was like our purpose, you know. Um, I think it was the, the spatial, the spatial, like, we've talked about this before, like how there's this, what religion has put a cap on the culture mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So in our conversation, it was like, well, the Baptist church was a lot of organization to help black community with civil rights movement so we were just touching on the history of that and stuff. okay so then Maya Angelou came up as one of the literature people because we were talking about my african-american uh, literature class okay. okay and all the literature that the mm-hmm. book was so thick Ella Fitzgerald we were Pause. just talking about all the works so okay. came to one of her works because I liked her works and so the fear so, so the fear that, and things that you experienced while in Panama is what sort of Made you think about this quote and drew you to it. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was like just, and he's also been having oh, trouble with just bonding with his son. So I told him, you know, a lot of things. Maybe just FaceTime with him instead of having the text message conversation that his son's having. He's yeah. in his mid thirties. Carlos is older, but he's like, you know, I want, I want the relationship. And he just lost his mom. Oh, his oh, wife, oh, so. oh, oh, oh. I did want to ask you one thing. While you were there, did you personally experience anything that made you have like fear for your own life? Given that she's talking about the fear of living. Yeah, it was um, kind of like, I'm not gonna, am I going to be able to provide enough for the children in the sense of being a leader or set, setting them up with financial stability? Mm-hmm. Uh, have I had enough conversations as they're growing and nurturing and loving them? Like just, am I doing what I, my part is to be a responsible adult, 
for my kids because sometimes that fear does come out that I'm lacking a build. Mm -hmm. Are you giving yourself enough time to really even accomplish those things? Because those aren't things that happen immediately. They happen yeah. over a long period of time, right. especially with children. You're absolutely right. And that's so I, I, I want you, if you guys have a no, question. No, it's all right, it's all right, man. I do try to, now I am trying to zoom, zoom out and not be so hard on myself, I, I would say, and hold myself to this timeline of, all right, it's October now. What have we accomplished? It's one week in October. It's the second week in October, third week. You know, it's just following. I, I do try to relax in it, and I do got to take more time and take you a gotta, vacation. I really do. I you got to give yourself, time. extend yourself that grace that we so often extend to others. You know what I'm yes. saying? That yes. We, we're, we're usually the first to be kind, to be gracious, you know, patient with other people. Usually we neglect ourselves that. We don't give ourselves that. No. I did want to ask you guys this thing. Um, yeah, go ahead. Actually, so do you guys also have, like, any sort of major fears in life? I know that you said, you know, the fear of not being successful, but have you guys ever really, like, sat down and thought about your own mortality, given that at this point we really are kind of at the halfway mark? Right. I know I have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all the time. You want to go? Yeah, I would say um, the fear of um, legacy. Mm. What, what am I going to leave behind? What am I going to be remembered by? I think for me that that bothers me the most um, and it troubles me the most because, you know, we, we are finite beings. Our spirit is infinite, but our flesh is finite. And I've come to realize and understand that with the time given and, you know, I, I can I can agree with him, you know, the anxiety, the stresses and, the, and the, the pressures that we have to deal with. It's like, all right, time is going. Time is all we have. What can I do to be a little bit more better? Day than I was the day before yesterday because overall we like to rush to the big picture but as you do these little things I feel eventually I'll come to the point where I build the legacy so I always feel like it's just grabbing for that time that I can have the time to establish that legacy mm -hmm. whether it be a physical thing whether it be a notion an act that sends ripple waves throughout the consciousness of people that I did that one deed that one act for that one kid and that changed his life and spurred him off in a direction that saved so many people or it be the greatness of Peep This Mom that's got people to subscribe, like, Yo. and comment. And also, what have you got there, sir? Um, I, I, like, I like this quote a lot. I have used to have it in my room mm. posted on the wall because there's a reminder that we have a birth date when we came into this earth. Yep. And we have an ending date. So it's what you do in between that dash. I heard that before. Right in between that dash. So... Even if you don't know your purpose in life, just being a good human, like she was saying, being a good human, doing good things, you know. But time is not always on our side. Oh, yeah. And we have to realize that, listen, go for it. Take your chances. Do what you have to do. Reach beyond the fears. I mean, I'll say this. I'll, I'll argue this. I think time may be on our side. Because now with science development, we could get clones. Oh, God. Yeah. And, and Why are we, we going can... back to this conversation? Why... <laughs> <laughs> you want to do it too? All right. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, no, but yeah, that was good. That was good. That was good. But that's the thing. Like, mm -hmm. uh, the fear, I also agree with that legacy. What yeah. you're going to, what's, what's your, your standpoint? Mm -hmm. And what you're going to leave not only for future kids. Well, even if you didn't have kids, what you leave for other people. And can I also interject? This right here is a very good man. I think you've already kind of like, I know you have other, there's more than one. Mm -hmm. it's, it's plural. But the way I see you move and the way you work in your community and things right. that you do, people people Thank hold you in higher regard for that. So trust me, you are making legacies. I Thank say you. that. Thank I commend you, you, you for that. But you know, you know, you said something very interesting, bro. You said that, you know, I'm talking to you. <laughs> he looked at me like, he looked at me like, <laughs> before, 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 we, uh, before we talk to Wise about this, because we're going to wrap it up, mm -hmm. but you said Carlos was a spy, and you mentioned his name, Why Carlos? you snitching, bro? <laughs> yo, wait, wait, why wait, you wait. snitching back? Yo, bro, what? yo, we got this name is Luther? <laughs> no, wait, I, wait. Can't give, I can't I, give you what he calls himself. I mean, that's what right, I mean. At least that's, that's what it he is. He gave he gave his first name. He didn't give a whole government Man, name. No. Yo, you know these people on Instagram and stuff. They will Google, start looking Carlos in the neighborhood where they live. They probably yeah. already know where you live, bro. Um, why, you just well, got you just got that man. Well, almost. You know what? In reality, they're gonna accuse us of being presidential because it's like, oh, of course, you went to Panama, met Carlos. 
Yeah. Mm, okay. <laughs> and that's pretty racist that you said it. That down. was wow. Crazy. That was not racist. Um, I, I, so it's not Carlos. Was, Carlos. No, you have to say it like that. Bro. I learned it from Akai to say it that way. I did not say Roll that. R. I I just <laughs> want to say, as on behalf of Pete this one, we do not affiliate with these two over here. Yes, H R K U please. So we just want to let you guys us. know. I gave y'all the name. Y'all come H R please. I'm the head. Put the time stamp. Mm-hmm. Find me. All right. So what about you, bro? Um, I think about it all the time. Mm-hmm. I was just talking off camera about the fact of dealing with like cosmic nihilism, the, this idea that nothing in the yeah. universe really matters. Like I even ask myself sometimes, if anything is possible and everything is possible, then does what you do really matter? Because it's like, it's probably been done somewhere else in the universe, different timeline, different mm-hmm. cycles, this whole meta narrative. It's, it's, it's weird. But to ground it too, I definitely do deal with... Um, this idea of my own mortality every day, you know, just mm. thinking about getting older, certain aches and pains that I didn't have last year, mm. yeah. going to the gym, trying to focus on fitness. It definitely does get to me. It's gotten to me half my lifetime ago, to be honest. But it hasn't gotten to you in the bed. Take blue chew. No, nah, no, no, we can't give a sponsorship yet. Yeah, no, we need the cash, bro. We need the cash. We can't. We gotta get the cash before we sell out, man. Oh, Woman, man. You don't sell out for not for no dollars. We need dollars, bro. Good, bro. Also, too, Dejounte <laughs> said that if Bluetooth sponsors us, he's gonna get an Illuminati tattoo right over his heart, mm-hmm. where it's gonna be pumping the most. Hey, oh, that's the it. Bluetooth. That's it for the quote. We done with this segment. We good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just, just before I let you off the handle, yeah. did you check the movie? Because you've brought up this terminology of nihilism before. Did you watch a movie that I suggested to you? Which one? You suggest a lot of movies. The Mad God. I did not watch that yet. Watch it. If you love nihilism, that movie is pure nihilism. You're, you're, you're gonna love to hate me because okay. instead of watching that, I this weekend I watched um, the Marvels. <laughs> I heard it was trash though. It's honest. not trash. It's just not great. I see the potential in that it. That means trash. It's not trash. It's just not great. Mediocre. Monica Rambeau was great, and uh, Kamala Khan's mom was great. But that's okay. all I'll say to that. That's my movie review. Let's keep it moving. All right. So you know what's interesting, like how as men we can have these kind of conversations and we can talk and share. But this one right here that we're going to do, the social media, deals with a PSA to all men. How to channel and deal with emotions. Can you run that one? For a man, if you want to change your life, if you want to be a better person, you want to get out the streets, the number one thing you got to do, King, is learn how to control your emotions. That emotional intelligence. Because if you never get control of your emotions, you never truly grow into a man. You stay a boy. So that's something that you must understand. And the second thing you must understand is eliminating pride. Pride is the reason why you lost that dream queen that you had in your life. Pride is the reason why your best friend is no longer your best friend. Pride is the reason why you haven't talked to your mother in longer than a year. Pride is the reason why you don't want to forgive your father. But what people don't understand is, man, in this life, bro, every human being got their own journey. This life will beat your ass until you can no longer walk. It's only those strong ones that survive, bro. And you got to understand, if you want your dream to save your life, you must give your life to your dream. If you want your dream to save your life, you have to give your life to your dream. So, guys, how do you think? What do you think about this video? One, but he dealt with two things. Mm-hmm. Handling emotions. So let's tackle that first. Yeah. How do you feel? What's part two though? Before you carry on. No, I'm gonna say part. Oh, okay, two. okay, okay. But part two, since you asked, my brother, mm-hmm. it's dealing with pride, right? Okay. The downfall and the rise of pride, because there's good pride and there's bad pride. <coughs> good pride, for example, have pride in your work, have pride yes, in how you correct. do things at your job and all that stuff. That's good pride. Negative pride, feeling yourself too much. Mm-hmm. You know, the list can go on. We'll go more into it, but let's talk about yeah. handling your emotions. What about you, official? So you think, seeing this little PSA to men, yeah. you think you have a good control of your emotions? I think I have a decent, but I could do a lot of work with um, some, some of the emotions. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't try to bottle the emotions up. I try to embrace them. Mm-hmm. And just like, you know, inside out, that movie. Can I ask which emotion you feel, or emotions you feel like you don't have the best control over? Uh, sadness. Really? Yeah. Uh, could you elaborate? I'm curious. <clears throat> like, um, for some reason, I have this, like, empathy for this world, like, like of humanity through the time history. Like, we've been here for a long time. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, we just still destroy each other and tear each mm-hmm. other down. And we perpetuate cultures where we do this. 
How do you deal with that then? Or like, do you, I guess you don't <laughs> deal with it the best way. Like, so what I is, don't how do deal you, with it the best way. Oh, sorry, I got tickled. That's fine. So like, what does it manifest as then? Uh, oh, man, the sadness starts to manifest into a little bit of anger. But then I take that like anger and I really try to channel it into focusing, like you said, um, doing something for yourself, like take, following your dreams, like living your dream. It really helps. It helps it really is just following my dreams. Like it gets rid of the sadness because I know I just answer my phone. That's where my business is. So that's how it just, it, it doesn't make life complicated when you have to start making decisions based off of your dreams, if that makes sense. Like you start like understanding, well, I know this, I'm not gonna put myself in some situations, circumstances, you know what I'm saying? Like if I'm talking to this kind of girl and she's into that, well, guess what, I'm not into that. Cause just I wanna challenge that for a, for a second. Yeah. I actually don't think that sometimes your dream is enough reason to learn how to control your, your emotions because you got people out here living their dreams yeah. so much, but they still don't know how to control their emotions. They're still angry. They're still throwing their sadness around. They're still violent. They're still greedy. So I don't necessarily think that your dream is enough. Not to say that he's wrong in the, in the social, but I don't think that's the best motivator for everybody. But I don't that's, think that's what he was saying. No, to what he was saying. Oh, to him. Saying, to I thought he, you meant to the video. Like, okay. like, I see what you're saying. Okay. Like, you know, the, the, okay. but sorry. It, 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 no, continue. <clears throat> it doesn't dismiss from the fact that work has to be done, you know? So you can do your work, like, even in that, which you may think is constructive, and you're like, oh, I'm a workaholic, but then it's like all you're doing is masking something and it's going to fester up and get like pungent over time still because all it takes is that one moment where you don't have a good control over your emotions and you just may spaz out whatever that emotion may be. I know generally speaking from this clip, I, I, I would have to assume that he's talking about anger. Mm. I mean, especially as black and brown men in our community, I think that's probably our own main emotion. Sometimes we could just be sad. Like what he said, we could just be sad. We could just be... <coughs> feeling a different kind of a way, but we always mm -hmm. translate it as anger. You know? I wanna I wanna piggyback off of what go you ahead, said just ahead. now. And this is for everybody. Yeah. Where do you think uh, I mean, yes, we can, you know, screw it. We'll focus on just the black community, young black boys, right? Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Where do you think are some of the roots of our anger? You can throw yours in there too, but like where do you think some of these the roots of this anger comes from? Neglect as a child. Um, no That's safety. a big one. That's a big no one. No safety or security to them. Um, the environment. And let me ask, what, what do you mean by no safety, no security? Be elaborate a little bit more. What kind so, of safety? Safety, a place where you can express, "Hey, mom, I'm having an a rough day." Safety. An emotional okay. say, it's gotcha. like, "Hey, I saw something earlier. Can I just talk to you about it? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was right. What I saw. And you, ma, you tell me a lot of things in this world that are good, but." I want to tell you, and this I guess talking about my little, you're talking to little me right now, but I guess. Yeah. Um, little me would say. So no place for like constructive dialogue, so like no yeah. safety and communication, yeah. okay? Yeah, you got to have a place for What about that. you, Makai? What you think? Um, so uh, it's a, it's, it's a multi-layered thing. I think neglect is one major one because in the, in the community, the lack of fathers Agreed. is another one. Also, if I add one more, it would be not only just the lack of fathers, but the lack of being able to bond with parents because parents have to work. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know how you least you see other communities, one parents at home at the games, able to be with you. You know, we don't always have that. Sometime at an early age, you're getting your other siblings to watch over yeah. you or things. So you're not even getting that kind of bond with a parent. Not even. Both, but just one. Mm, that's By true. the time they come home, get out my face. I'm tired. I'm hungry. Leave me alone. Give me a few minutes. I worked all day. Yep. So what do you do? That's a major one. You bottle everything in, and that's the thing that happens, especially with young black men. We can't channel our emotions. Anger becomes a root. You become passive aggressive, and then the passive aggressive because becomes aggressive. Aggression. All because of a reaction to an action. Yeah. That's why they, they said nature versus nurture goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you might get a little bit too much nurture, not enough environmental, yeah. or you get a lot of environmental, not, not enough, enough nature, a mm -hmm. nurture, and look what you come up. And that's shitty why people. Both, that's really right, like you said, but that's also what you just said too. The dad needs to be there. Like I make sure I'm there every morning for my kids and I'm 
just because it's breakfast is. And then I'll have my nights and my weekend mm. switch. So, so wise, what do you think? I think one of the major contributors to anger for young black men, especially along with you, what you guys were saying, is lack of visible, uh, lack of visibility in options. So when I say that, I mean that there's a lot of young black people, young black men, they feel like they don't really have any upward mobility. They think that the world is only what they see in their environment. Um, how many times you hear, especially like growing up in high school, you know, rappers is um, perfect example. Thugnificent from the Boondocks, remember? Mm -hmm. Thugnificent, yeah. Yeah. rags the riches, rags the riches. Mm -hmm. Like the, uh, he said, he came from what is it, Terra Terra Bella, which is like beautiful Earth. Mm -hmm. But then when you go there, the hood, yeah. it's like completely dusty and broken. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's this idea that people really feel like there is no hope and there are no opportunities, and they're mad at that. But then to take it even further because they're mad and they don't have any constructive way to deal with it, there's no opportunities, there's no hope, now I perpetrate on you. Mm -hmm. I'm mad, I'm poor, and you know what? You got a little bit of something, dang, I wish I had that. Let me get those. Mm -hmm. I'm, mad at, I'm mad that I'm poor and I'm mad that I, I don't have any hope, and then you're making me feel worse, let me lash out at you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I, that, well, those are at least my experiences. No, you're absolutely I, 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 I would, So what do you think, bro? I would say... Um, I think a big chunk of it also mostly deals and it stems from the household where children yeah. are being children are not being recognized as beings. An actual person with emotions, with a mind, with a personality. I think it that's the foundation where it starts. Like <clears throat> actually develop a relationship with your child. Yes, we get the whole dance of I'm the parent, you're the child, but Mm. really build a relationship right. with them where they can trust you, they can confide in you. I know from my anecdotes, you know, just speaking vaguely, like, I never felt safe to share anything at all. Mm. I would always keep things within myself because if, if I say this, this is what's going to be the outcome. So do I really have trust in this person? Always no, it always starts with shows. trust. It always yeah. starts with trust. And that's why, you know, recently, you know, um, Something happened on social media. I, I witnessed and I saw it, uh, this lady. She ended up taking the life of two of her kids. And someone said in the comments, the young kids, beautiful kids, it was so sad that I was distraught from it. And people said people really need psychological evaluations before they have kids. I I honestly yeah. think so. I, that, I, I'm call me. I'm I may be, I may that's, be that's, that, that's, a, that's a slippery slope. I, I, I kind of yeah, I kind of agree with that situation. Is I'm it, glad is it gonna happen? No, I don't think it's going to happen. But idealistically, I Listen, think that's something we should work towards eventually. Not to go on a tangent. Yeah. If a lot of parents were evaluated, most of them wouldn't deserve kids. They wouldn't deserve kids. A lot of them would. Most human beings wouldn't. A, a lot of people would, and we would have a better. We would have a different. World. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting thing. We'll yeah. have to. That, that, that's, that's, we, we, that's a nice can of worms. We, I would love to go down uh, that yeah, route. Yeah, well, damn. listen, we could save that for a topic later but on. But part two, real quick. Jump, 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 jump. When jump. it comes to pride. Yeah, yeah. And he said it so beautiful. Pride can separate you from not talking to your mom for a year. Yeah. Pride can separate you from not having that woman that you once had. Pride can separate you from the things that were that was meant to be an asset to your life became a liability because of pride. Yeah. Now, we know good pride is. We talked about it. Yeah. But this negative pride that a lot of people hold on, sometimes we're too good to ask for help. Sometimes we feel. Go that ahead, bro. Goes hand in hand with what the topic is. We're gonna come up later, right? With the ego, because the, the pride is the, is the fuel towards the ego. But yes, I do agree. There is a negative side to it as well. So, so imagine well, I, now. I, I want real quick. Go, 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 go. Imagine now when you're dealing with a handful of emotions that you never address, and then you add the big emotion of pride to that. You see why a lot of men have their downfall. So the question now I have is. Some negative pride. How do you think we should address that in our community? Well, don't be fearful because it's drawing, like I said in the quote, it brings mm -hmm. out fear. So you got to be strong. Find a network of guys somewhere to go and talk to your brethren, I feel. So when you say don't be fearful, I'm, and this is a... Judgment. It's the judgment of being vulnerable to say, hey, I am hurting. Mm -hmm. I got a lot on my plate. There's a lot going on I haven't mm -hmm. said to anybody. I can't say it to anybody. I got to say to you, this is what it is. Like, it's not okay. a secret. It's just, 
life is gonna life is obviously gonna give you a lot. You got your stuff in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're all like pressure pu breaks pipes. Pressure makes diamonds. Yeah. We're trying to make diamonds. I mean, we're trying to communicate our trying yeah. to communicate what's going on. It's like taking a breath of fresh air. Like if you don't if you keep holding all that, you're gonna choke on it. You know. Mm -hmm. You gotta you know it. Speak it. Yeah, speak it. That is what are you about you wise. I'm gonna go back to the same thing that I keep telling people. I keep preaching this. Listen, listen, listen to what I'm about to say. It's okay to be wrong. It it's is. okay to admit, hey, I was it wrong. Is. Yo. Hey, what? I hurt your feelings. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Is it is it okay to lose as well too? Some it people, is. Some depends. People, depends. So, I don't no, know. No, no, no. Depends on how much life oh, I got left. No. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, yeah. Because <laughs> some people just can't take an L. We all take L's. No, no, I'm saying I some people L's. can't take L's as far as like they can't put it aside. Like, yo, you got that. You, 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 you know, yeah. how much time I, I play saying, ball with this right. guy? You boxing, you, you deal with competitive go, people. Me and him go back, it's the competitive nature in us. Yeah. Sometimes he be whooping me on the perimeter line. Sometimes I have my days, I be laying up, but it's like, yo, you honestly got me there. I, good game, you know what I'm saying? The yeah. only combat to that, I could say, is kind of knowing yourself and understanding that there are things that you're just not good at. Mm -hmm. And there's things that you're not good at now. So what develops but, this negative pride then, bro? What develops negative pride, I feel, yeah. is when you're not taught, when you're not given, when you're not taught and given pride in what you can feel good about. So for me, you can be better at me in boxing or whatever. Yeah. But motherfucker, I got, I got, I'm really good at math. I don't know how useful that is to you, baby, but I'm confident in that. It makes me right. feel good about myself. That's good. It's mm -hmm. the scale and balance where it's like, you only feel... You feel very worse about things when you don't have anything to feel good right. about. That makes true. sense. Once and then once again, going back to the idea when you don't like feel that. that there are opportunities, mm -hmm. when you feel like you're trapped and there's no opportunities, you feel bad constantly. But when you can say, "Hey, I ain't got no food in my house, but you know what? I got a roof. It's raining right now. Mm -hmm. I, I'd rather be dry and warm than hungry and wet, and then full and wet. Perspective. And, and it's, it's perspective everything. Of, it's everything. Perspective, perspective is everything. It's how you look at everything. Time. But that's just my literally personal experience. Literally, I super Ray. <laughs> I watched one of his videos. A guy was cooking hair to eat. Hair, literal hair. Some people out here. He's like, don't. He said in the video, he does funny voiceovers. Check him out, super Ray. He said, you should not be complaining about anything about no sugar. People out here cooking <coughs> hair. Yeah. Yep. And it really changes up your whole psyche when the way you see it. Don't get me wrong. It is easier. What I'm saying it is easier is. said than done. Yes. It's absolutely easier said than done. But I'm saying from my experience, the only way that I've been able to sort of like be less prideful and humble myself is like, you know mm -hmm. what? I'm not always right. Mm -hmm. Not always right. Of course. Yeah. Right. Bro. You know, what about you, DeJounte? That's about feedback. I think it's I think it's the number one thing, the most important thing is being honest. Brutally honest with yourself. And that's hard for most people. I agree with you. Just I, I think hard. because and that's gonna lead all into the into the topic, but it's like I think you have to be brutally honest with yourself. Like look at yourself in the mirror and be like, Yeah, I'm lacking in these areas and, and I know I'm good at this, I know I'm good at that, but you know, I'm still a work in progress. And I think as long as you could be honest with yourself, I mean not gonna sell yourself short. That's to, what I honestly think. To that matter, the mm -hmm. honesty. Do you think that people don't want to be honest with themselves because it's this delusion, or they just they think that they know it all? Say the first one, the first part. Like delusion. So people aren't honest with themselves. Sometimes I feel like because they're delusional. Like yeah, you, it, it, it's yeah. it. It can be. It could be a little bit of both. It could be either one or the other. But I think most of it also comes. It stems from people just not being comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's what I think. People are too coddled. People, they want to hear yes men and yes women around them all the time. You know, the minute that you point out any little flaw, like, it, ooh, and they start squirming. You know, like when they, our producer said, you look fat if you slouch yeah, it. Yeah, I said, <laughs> when listen. You, when you asked, he gave, said, you the, listen, he gave you a fair let answer. Let me know if I'm fat. He's like, if I, my posture's upright, I don't look fat. If I slump down, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I think I think, I think it's, it's, it's you, you have to develop a layer of thick skin, you know? Like, I'll, it, I'll tell people, listen, call me out on my BS or whatever. I expect the same from you. And we have to know that we have a safe environment for that. Because you can't just do that with anyone. Is it a thick skin or is it just factual acceptance? It's both. You have to have some thick skin because it's, it's, it's pride in that your wounds. It's pride in that your flaws. And you're never going to be without flaws. 
Right. That's true. Always gonna have the, if you have flaws, you always have something continuing to look for to work to work on towards better. Just like the guy told me, he's like, "Oh, your dribbling is good, but he's like, you gotta start practicing with that left." Mm-hmm. That way, he's like, right. "Do this." He showed yeah. me some drills. He's like, "Work with the right." As soon as you get close two feet away from the from the hoop, switch to your left and lay up with the left. Mm-hmm. I see. You know what I, I think I, it is? I think some people are fa- they have a fear of wanting to be retrained or reprogram or learn something new. It, it takes such a comfort. Yeah, it takes you out of comfort, comfort zone. You're not comfortable saying, "Well, I w- I was told this all my life. I don't want I don't want to be told something different now, especially if it's like, yo, I, I've been around you for a month. Anybody ever told you this?" And let me quickly interject. I saw a recent post not too long ago on my feed, and the guy was like, "I was so envious and jealous of this guy with his skill set of setting up um what is it called uh Oh, I don't even know the name of it. Uh, it it's it's the, the thing that holds up the TV. Forgot oh, the name. Oh, the mounts? The mounts. He's like, and he said, instead of me hating on the guy, he was like, I actually reached out to the guy and said, hey, listen, I actually admire your skill set. Could you teach me? Could you show me? And he was willing to lower himself to be like, all right. So, before you, anyways, uh, continue. Before yeah. you wrap it up, I just want to ask one last question <coughs> for you guys. Right. What do you guys think are some ramifications of us not being, of us not being able to, control our emotions. As he said, he doesn't believe that you can be, you can move from a boy to a man unless you learn how to control mm-hmm. your emotions. What do you think are some ramifications if you don't? I'll tell you the number one one. The, the biggest one and I don't think. say jail because that's obvious. Yeah, jail, but your world is small. Yeah. Your world will never mm-hmm. grow. Your mm-hmm. world will never expand. You'll never be able to see beyond the four corners of your wall, the four corners of your block because your that's way of true. thinking may work for here. But there's a world out there that's bringing in people think differently. You have right. to be able to adapt in here. Even if you may not agree with everything, you can take it with a pinch of salt. Mm-hmm. If you can't learn to do that, your world will never expand. It's yeah. over. You'll what be confined. You? Oh, uh, you're, like you said, if you don't do it, your neighborhood's going to get gentrified and you're going to be the one looking for... If you don't know how to control your emotions, you're going to get gentrified. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's you, you, a Starbucks is coming soon. Yo, it's you coming. I got Learn how to control your emotions. Or, or you will. Your, your, your place is going to get... Nah, you yo, learn how to control your emotions or Trump Tower is going to buy your property. Yo. What about you, Makai? <laughs> no, what about you, bro? Me, I think that um, if you don't know how to control your emotions, you'll never be able to start a business. Right. Mm. Dude, you never gonna make no money, or yeah. you never gonna make no long money. Mm-hmm. Mm. Simple. Yo, that everything so you get kicked out of your neighborhood. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> everything that you guys said was well, well, well put. And I would just say, listen, understanding pride and understanding emotions is a very important thing. Understanding how to channel your emotions. Understanding that you're never too old to change. And accept change. Every 10 years in your life, something is bound to happen. Whether it's physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, something's going to change in your life. Understanding how to deal with it and channel it will only make you from a boy to a man. See, with pride, the problem with pride that a lot of people don't realize, it comes with destruction. No matter what we do, it comes with negative pride, of course. It comes with destruction. Mm -hmm. No matter what. If we... We have a negative ego in this podcast. It's only going to fail. Mm-hmm. If you have a negative ego when you play in sports, the I, 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 I. Mm-hmm. Not everybody could be the Michael Jordan of the team. Michael Jordan couldn't even be the so, Michael Jordan without the team. So you see what I'm saying? So that I mentality, that me, that above all, there's a level of ego that goes with things, right? Mm. And a lot of people have this inflated ego. So let's start checking our emotions addressing our emotions, and sometimes listen to when other people tell us something about ourselves. And speaking of ego. Speaking of ego. Don't have any ego by liking and commenting and subscribing. I don't know about that. <laughs> Let me stop. Like, does that help? All, all I want to say. Comments will save your life. No, I'm just yeah, joking. Yeah, right. All I want to <laughs> say. She loves my big ego. Oh, God. Here we go. Such a big ego. All right, so we're going to segue into the topic right now. And I had an argument with this fellow visual artist, and Mm. I I just wanted to start off, give you a a definition, right, by the Oxford Dictionary definition. A person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance in metaphysics, a conscious thinking subject. In psychoanalysis, the part of the mind that mediates between the conscious and the unconscious and is responsible for reality testing, 
and a sense of personal identity. With that being said, I kind of want to introduce a clip to you guys. If you haven't checked out this documentary, it's been out for some time now. It's genius and it's based off of Kanye West. So without further ado, roll the clip. You gonna make it, and when you make it, keep the same perspective. Still keep the same hunger, you know what I mean? That hunger is to always be, man, I feel something, I gotta go put it down, man. And then you put it down. Once, once niggas tell you you hot, still doubt yourself. And with that yeah. being said, fair use, fair use, fair use. I can't wait to use. collect that, ne that Netflix check. Yo. Yeah, fair use. And with yes. that being said, I had an argument with this fe fellow visual artist. Shout out to Andre the Poet. He's a fellow artist like me. And he said, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy was Kanye West's great, greatest unprecedented, unprecedented body of work. Why? Because he was not tapped into the ego, he was uninhibited by the ego. What do you guys think? On the music, just on that level alone. I think on a music tip, uh, Kanye West has always been about ego, and I think that, no disrespect to him, but I think you're wrong. Kanye's always been about his ego. If you've seen the Genius documentary, everything he's done has been about the ego. I'm the greatest. Now, on a real tip about the ego in general, personally, I think that the ego, at least for me, I think the ego has been the best part about me being successful. I think it's been my driving factor in the sense that how dare you deny me what I'm good at? How dare you not acknowledge me for how good that I am? It's not the best part of me, but me accepting that is like, hey, I ain't perfect. If I got to be an asshole to get what I got to get done or to get what I want, I guess I have to. Quick question. Why do you think then people have such a negative connotation on ego because... Ego is needed. It's self-esteem. It's really positive self-esteem when you go to the realms of inflation now. Yeah. That's where it comes in. So I talk to me. I think the reality for most people, most human beings throughout human history, the reason why they have a problem with ego is that the people that are the people that control society at a grander scale usually do things driven by ego and we're all affected by it. So politicians. Um, people that control major, major corporations. It's like... Mega churches. Don't get me started. Yeah. Don't get me started. Woo. I had to, had to sit off that mm -hmm. one real quick. So, so with that being said, why do you think we live, live in such an ego-dominant society? Why, why do you think that that is the must? We're human beings. Ego was a part of what makes us human beings. We have free will, the freedom to choose, the freedom to express. If we didn't do that, we wouldn't be human. We can't be human without having an ego. At least that's my opinion. That's true, but does it, do you think that, is it more constructive or destructive? Do you feel like it brings us closer or does it really divide us? Is it the illusion of that it divides us? You'll never have one without the other. Yeah, it's hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, just to add on to what Wise mm -hmm. is saying, in a capitalist market, you have to have a level of ego. Have There's to. no way you're gonna survive in this market. Like. Think about it. If you efficient, just using you for an example, right? If you are, you're in the business of vent cleaning, right? Chimney clean, every type of thing that deals with it. If you didn't have an ego that you were the best, right? In a job where, well, you told me the numbers before. There's there's a couple hundred in your area, right? Mm -hmm. That does the same thing. Really? You no, know, my area. Uh, there's well, there's a lot of scammers out there too. So be careful of the yeah. scammers. Hit up the vent doctor. But, but there's a lot of people that do what you do. Yeah. But you have to know and tell people that you do it better than them. Absolutely. And is that wrong? No. That's the only way you're going to but succeed. You're right. And that's using... So I have used unhealthy ego and I have used healthy ego. Mm -hmm. I try to lean on... Right, so board. what is unhealthy? Give yes. that definition first. Yes. and then because that's what I'm driving hit, at. So the, the unhealthy ego is like what you said, the inflated, like dipping into the dark negative of it, right. the greed of it, the pride of it, the... I, I'm doing this for me. I'm kind of pushing everybody aside, which eventually you'll start pushing your clients away. Ah. But if you're doing it, like he said, do it like, like when you were like raw. You're hungry. The early conduit of beginning to end. I need to get my first client. I'm hungry. Who's going to buy my first album? Like Who's mm. going to be my first I, client? Well, then here's my question. And I'm going to take care of you so you can tell your people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The drive. That, when you can take care of that, that if you keep every, I treat every client like they're my first and I treat every client like they're a celebrity. 
I tell them, you're, you're like my LeBron James today. I love your house. It's beautiful. So then does but it... But it makes them feel good because of inflating the ego. But it's a healthy inflation. Like, so then is ego necessarily wrong? Is having an ego necessarily wrong as long as it's getting you what you need to get done in... I'm not saying the reason why I wanted to bring this conversation. Yeah. It's not that it's not that necessarily ego is bad. Mm. We need an ego to I survive agree. in this world. Mm -hmm. But does ego really? What I'm trying to get at the just for does ego hinder us from being the best version of ourselves? Which means, to me, the way I view it, ego is finite. I feel like ego should always be shifting and changing, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It needs to be where malleable. You, where you yeah. just have like a, a home set is just like this is it and this is all it will ever be, but then. Two years down the line, that ego may not be able to fit in the grand scheme of things. And you have to now reinvent yourself, which is why I said I think that, and I did agree with him, that Kanye West was probably the most uninhibited when it came to creating, I will say it, this is art. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy was art from start to, to end. And I think you kind of have to lose your mind in a sense to really tap into the raw greatness of what's within, because your ego is very finite. It is. No. I think it's. I mean, that, that's that's mm. that's that's my viewpoint. Maybe I sound too psychedelic, no, no, shroomy, no, and stuff. No, no, no. But no. Uh, disagree with me. Go ahead. The floor is open. So when you say finite, I, I think it's not so finite, because at any moment, okay. at any moment, a person with with good ego mm -hmm. can instant change into a demon, a savage. And, that's true. But you said something that I wanted to ask you. Go ahead. Because you were saying, like, when a person hones in on their ego, right, it could be detrimental, right, a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily agree because to, to, to a certain extent. Because mm -hmm. I didn't hone in on what I really wanted. Peep this one wouldn't exist. Exactly. True. You see, if, if I didn't hone in on to... What I wanted, I wouldn't have a hundred thousand in the bank. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't get those jobs to do. I had to really focus and say when people were saying, "Yo, Makaya, this not gonna work." I said, "Shut your effing mouth. This is yo." Gonna work. Like I had to let people know this is gonna. Work. When people were saying this was a little podcast. Oh yeah, oh we, that's that's a big we're, one. We're monetized and they're not. This was the little podcast. My ego was telling me, "Listen." Mm. I don't give a F. Even when I, I had a yeah. moment where I was like, maybe I should start pulling back because a lot of people was talking. My ego was like, are you dumb? You put all this money in here? Mm -hmm. Are you dumb? You doing all this music? Are you dumb? No, you need this. You deserve this. You mm. want this. And that ego was, I will admit, it's inflated. I went to the deep ends, but that deep ends got us where we needed to get to mm. in this particular now there's yeah. times when we can channel and mm -hmm. it can get rough and that channeling can put you on a negative dark side of ego mm -hmm. and that's what i'm afraid of when men lose their their whole what's the word i identity identity because mm. it's kanye west fair use no disrespect but we can see where his ego went from here to the moon and how negative he, like, he lost himself. Yeah, he well, did. I'll, Go I'll, ahead. I'll continue, bro. My fault. I've been I on channel. Channel. Just Maybe me. I'm wrong. No, no, Yo, I'm, I'm not going to lie. If you zoom in real close, I just got goosebumps. Oh, did he? Did he? <laughs> yep. God damn. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get on camera and say it again. I'm wrong? I, no, I know, no, 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 not that. <laughs> He's like, I don't know you wrong. Wait, right. But he no, no, said, she said okay. my ego is big. <laughs> no, like I'll get on camera and say once again, I am a stand for Kanye West, like in terms of music and terms yeah. of understanding how he thinks Love in a way. I'm not perfect. I'm not a Kanye translator, but I do understand. It's like ultimately, say what you want about ego, but Kanye sometimes you gotta have the biggest ego, whatever you want to call that, to be as great as that. You can't be like a humble. Tell me one humble billionaire. There are none. They could, I don't want to hear like, oh, well, you know, I'm just a regular guy. I read books and, you know, I'm really successful. I give money back. Nah, F that. I'm rich. Mm. I got millions. Yes, I can get your bitch, your bitch, your bitch, anybody's bitch. I'm that rich. If you want to be that successful, you need to be that unhealthily egotistic. Is it wrong to say I mean, that? I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't. You have to have, maybe, I don't, no, you right. dip the right. reason into the dark energy. Like he said, into the dark energy. like I, you have to be somewhat megalomaniacal 
this obsession. So you want us to be like you? Uh, please don't be like me, dude. That's please what you, don't be like that's me. That's what you are. But so, you're right. I know. I, I said know. it. I saw you. Don't before. be like me. That's why I'm not HR. Is your ego the reason why you don't eat the butt? <laughs> Sorry, I had to bring we'll you. We'll be right back. back. We'll be right back from the sport. Hold on. So, so we're, if y'all if y'all did it, stay tuned. That's from a that's from a previous episode. Yeah, that was from a previous oh episode where gosh. he won't eat booty. I will not. We we over here talking about the show. <laughs> All right, bro. I'm sorry. Oh, man, turn it right. <laughs> nah, that was funny. I'm sorry. I had to throw that little comic humor in there. I, All right, bro. I'm you, sorry, bro. That was a good one. You know what I mean? That was a good move. You know, uh, I, 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 I can't right, you continue, continue, nah, you, I'm sorry. Nah, that was a good oh. one. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Okay. That's why we're a comedy podcast. Oh, oh man. man. Nah, but, for entertainment purposes. Go ahead, bro. But, you know, but, oh, like, but seriously, like, yo, come on. Let's be real. No, you you're right, though. You want to know why politicians don't want to get out of office? Because they want that power. Because you know why? That power makes them, it strokes their ego like no come other. Oh, absolutely. Come with money. Come with, yeah. Absolutely. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. right. And at the same time, that ego for most people is what keeps you safe. But you know what I think the issue is? Can I ask you? Mm. You saw everyone saw the movie Get Out. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, think? Do you think it's Good. when you go too far in and you can't get yourself back to your normal state? I think with billionaires and stuff, they have extreme inflated egos, but there's also a humanistic part of them, like. You see Elon Musk on the Joe Rogan podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's laughing. He's even smoking a little doobie and stuff. You know, you might see these other billionaires like, oh, what's his name? Um, John uh, Cena. John Cena, not <laughs> I just want to say <laughs> John, John, John Cena, John believe Cena. it or not, he is, uh, the way he carries himself, he's, he's a very chill yeah. guy. Been yeah. chilling. But, but he's very know, honest with his beginnings. Oh, but, Bill uh, Gates. So is it because, are you saying... Not to, you need to dip in, which I get that part, but staying there, that's my fear. So what do you think about that? Staying too far in the negative ego. Uh, I'll put it, I mean, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. If I go around punching people and every time I punch people, I get money. Why would not I continue punching people? I one day you're going to come across that I, dude. I but that money's going to, sorry. I, Mm-mm. I, I, I don't talk agree. about it. Mm-hmm. I, I, well, I don't mm-hmm. agree with that. Like, like uh, someone who spoke to me, and they're like, yeah, you know, like, um, I'm speaking in vague terms, like, you know, like you're willing to do and do whatever it is necessary. Some power is not for you. And I say that to say that there's things you have to do to keep and maintain that power. So are people- you going to be comfortable and fine at the end of the day? Like he said, wow. I want to make sure that my hands are clean at the end of the day. Some you may not have that perspective, but if you think that that's fine to go ahead and do that, that I don't know. I'm a little iffy, though. I, I don't necessarily... I think we're going to contact HR after this oh, for you. Uh, yeah. no. You talk about eating booty now. You want, you want to snitch on me. You got some goddamn nerve. <laughs> Sorry, go on. HR, HR love me. You see Man, comments? We're it. ganging up on live. <laughs> <y'all, y'all, laughs> sure. Yo, I'm reporting y'all in the comments. You gonna see, I'm going to catch you in the comments. <laughs> Official, what you was about nah, to say? Bro. I was just saying it reminded me of like dating a stripper type thing. Like, <laughs> oh. Because, like, <laughs> you got a certain this type segment. of secure like, dude to be in that kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know everybody's going to be up on her anyway. So it's like, man, do I really want to? Yeah, do you I really? I could. But then. You know what comes with it. Yeah. But that's not really an ego thing. You think so? Dude, I, you, you, there's no healthy ego of having a relationship like that. You why would you, why you hating on you sex have, workers, bro? I'm going to be in a dark ego, living in there, getting all my unhealthy Why are you hating on sex workers? I'm, hating, I'm loving You're saying this wrong to date strippers. I got some beautiful friends. You're saying this wrong to date strippers. <laughs> I got some beautiful stripper friends. You're saying this wrong to date OnlyFans models. Nah, man. Dang, so, you go deep well, right now. You got some was, nerve. Get out of here. Was, was, I don't know. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So what was that question that you had for us, bro? So the question would be, um, do you guys have any kind of checks and balances in place to kind of like check yourself in a sense mm. to feel like you're not going off the far end with your ego? Do you have something that grounds you or are you like a wise guy? You're just a <laughs> megalomaniac and you're just <laughs> punching people in the face to get 15K per punch. Hey, what's good, baby? You know what I'm Dang. saying? What's good, baby? HR, please. Y'all can't stop. Anyways, yeah. do you guys do you guys have any if any, or do you kind to, to kind of just bring yourself back to earth? Yeah, yeah. I I, I always mm-hmm. have a 
a time period where I, I meditate. I, I listen to some mm. music. I decompose by listening to no words, some jazzy, some ASMR type lo-fi music. Just to bring myself back down because I know staying there can be very dark and it can also be very lonely and it can also be very dangerous. Yeah. Now, I want to ask you, because you are definitely well polished. You have right. a lot of great accolades. You've done a lot of great things. As you've mentioned, right. of course, do you ever feel the, the, the burning urge to stay there? Yeah, Cause, because cause of how good it feels. Because hunger, when you're, when you're hungry, mm -hmm. you do, and let me even take it to the next level. When you're starving, you would do anything for food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then even when you realize that how easy it was to get that food, you do anything else to continue to have food. And then when you have food, you be like, you know what? I don't want to share this food. So you do wow. anything to keep people from eating off of your plate as well. Mm -hmm. And why I say that's why I have to bring myself down because there's times where I see why people will use other people as stepping stones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's why I said I have a good sense of healthy balance, even when it came to dealing with us. We're all individuals here, right? And y'all, when we came together and we talked a little inside, I was like, all right, CEO, 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 blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. I could have easily been like, you know, I'm going to use these dudes, get to what I need. I'm going to take 80%. They're going to share 20, right? A lot of companies, when you see companies and you see these people, they are using people as step ladders. Of course. They, they, they have no heart. At any moment, me and you be doing transactions, right? Mm -hmm. Next minute, the fish is going to be like, all right, I see what I can get from him. Step right on him, push him down to get what he need. A good story, uh, fishing. If you, can I share a story that yeah. you know? So a good story. A fishing was learning how to do these vending things. I like using you as an example because me and you are in business. Mm -hmm. The guy who you asked him to train you, but he rather not because you were his competition, right? Yeah. He, he rather not give you the tools so you can make your own fish. Mm -hmm. He rather you work for him mm -hmm. than to be on the thing. Is, yeah. is that wrong? No, it's not wrong. But what happens is because of our ego, we don't want to share. share. We're going to be like, nah. Greed. I need this all for myself, you know? Give me mine, you know, that type of, you know what I mean? Hey, now, that, now, that begs the question, do you think that's a moral flaw that us as black people have? Yeah, no, it's, it's a you human thing. Do you, do you think, human. Well, human. us specifically, I'm asking oh, in our demographic, do you think it's keeping us from progressing then? And just that little niche and scenario, the anecdote you shared, Y'all could have been, y'all both could have been probably been monopolizing as black men. They could have. We the, are. The, 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 way the, the way that could have set up, they could have been like, yo, we're going to split Connecticut in half. We're going to take Pretty this much. over together. But instead. Y'all would have built an empire. Instead, uh, this man ain't want to work with him. He ain't want to work with you. He called me today for money and jobs. Oh, you wow, see? Because you, because you. Yeah, he called me today. I'm look, telling you. Look, he already look. has six lined up you calling me for you, work. You see what the negative dark side of the ego <clears throat> get? Don't follow wise guy, so, please. What? So, just say. So, <laughs> just say. So why? What, what do you feel based on what he was saying? Ask your question again. Uh, do you have checks and balances in place to kind of keep you in check, kind of ground you in a sense, or do you not have it? You're just free, unhinged. You, you, you like what he said. You're willing to step on people. You're willing to do people dirty, wrong. The biggest check that I have, aside from what I said earlier, like realizing that I'm not always right, for me is that, and I say this with my therapist, it's like I'm always connected with who I am. I'm connected with who I am behind wise guy. I know who I am. I know my weaknesses. I know what I'm good at, and I know what I'm not good at. So it's like I'm always sort of at an equilibrium. I know that, like, listen, y'all think you, you can think whatever you want, but it's like, but I really feel like this. I'm I'm just a guy. Mm -hmm. And I have a question too. You you brought up an interesting point. You said you know yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think we really ever truly know ourselves? Do you think, Ooh. or do you think it's a continuous thing since we always evolve and change? Ooh. Don't you think we continuously learn ourselves? I think because you may have something about you you don't even know yet, and then you come to. That was good. Cross paths with something, and then it unlocks something you you didn't know you had that side in you. That's why I go to therapy. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, I do think that most people don't know themselves mm. I, because as somebody who takes time and con 
I told my mom this so many times. Like, you think when I'm sitting there for 14 hours in a day playing video games, I'm just playing video games mindlessly with my brain shut off? No, I'm thinking about everything that's going on in my life. There's so many things. I'm thinking about who I am as a person, my accolades, my failures, my hopes and dreams, everything that's <coughs> wrong about me, everything that feels wrong, everything that's right about me, friendships, relationships, everything. I'm taking the time to think about that stuff. Mm. The average person is scrolling on Instagram and TikTok. Mm. They couldn't think the same thing to scroll? <clears throat> no. Your attention span ain't that long if you not. mess up. I'm, yeah. I'm taking shots. Yes, I'm taking he shots. Does, he does burnt me right now. You got I'm that. Shots. You got that. <laughs> I, I got one more question. So he asked about. Whoa, hold on. I'm going to check and balance real quick. Yeah. Ooh, uh, yeah. So for oh, my checks and balance, right? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. This oh, yeah, that's <laughs> My checks and balance for me, though, is um, same as you, but mixed right. with that. It's the blend of the two. So it's mm. a master meditation right. method. Yeah. Just going into deep meditation. Mm -hmm. Now I use violin. Oh. Because that frequency. You play violin? I wish I'm, I want to learn. Okay. So I am going to learn. Okay. I have not learned yet. Okay. But I will. That's learn. what's up. It's a right hander's instrument. So I'm a lefty. So okay. You know, but they have left. They, I they know. Have I hope right. I can rock that joint. I hope I can rock it. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to do it. Um, because instrument, I just really want to learn something. Mm -hmm. But um, meditation with that and going into the solution box of your mind, like you mm -hmm. said, analyzing every aspect of your life, like just, dude, who yep. are you? What are you as you're moving through this like mm -hmm. realm today? Constantly learning it. Constantly learning every it. Every day you're a new person. It. Like, you know the atoms, protons, neutrons we have in our body constantly reverberating? Yo, could I reverberate it? All right, let's heal. Let's see if we can make this... Start to move. Could we really like trying to be a engine? superhero? You trying to be Yo. static shot, bro? I ain't mad at you. Yo, I want you to do. I'm telling you, I'm trying to do it. So you know, that's so what that that we do it here. We have Pete this one. Mm -hmm. Your question. No, so the dark side. And I want you mm -hmm. to answer it right after, and then we'll wrap, wrap it up. up. Mm -hmm. All right. So he was asking about yeah, I've had to tap into that darkness, and you're afraid to like stay there. You ever been afraid to stay in that dark ego? I know. I know how to manipulate it. Because, as I've said on the podcast before and in therapy, I allow myself to be human. And I ain't perfect. I got some bad shit about me like everybody else. But if I can channel it and use it to get what I want, it helps me out. Mm -hmm. Earth. Mm -hmm. Wind. Fire. Fire. Ego abandoned. I love it. I thought you were going to Captain Planet, like but okay. Was going Captain right, Planet. Right. What about you, bro? The question was on. So, so you ever had, you ever afraid to stay in the dark side? And then, not. And then we wrap yes. up with you. Yes. All right, so elaborate just a little bit. Um, it was, uh, I think you remember it, it was um, when we were doing all the cruise trips. Okay. Yeah, so um, around that time, I was really like mm -hmm. into the dark side and using it to get what I wanted. And I was really getting anything and everything I wanted. Like, you can get backstage, women, whatever you want, you can get mm -hmm. emphasis by the getting world. into there. And it was just, it felt great. It was good. Life felt was running fun. through them shorties, bro. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and it's like, but then I didn't want to stay there because I started feeling like, well, there's this perception of what people are going to see you as, mm, as okay. you're moving through the realm. So if ah, you're moving through the realm this way, that's a really good one. it's going to be like, well, you can't beg the realm for forgiveness. It's like when Flash was running through time and resetting time, and it's like, well, now time is catching up with you, and they sending time's ghosts after you. Mm -hmm. So and what you going to do now when the ghosts come up? You can't so say I'm, no. What I'm kind of seeing is what you're saying is like the, the, there's a, a, a famous uh, Yoruba proverb that says, be careful you do what you do that you do not stain your garment. So I'm thinking in terms of that because mm. now it's like, oh, That's deep. I see that little stain. It may be a little stain, but it's like, eh, I don't know if that's someone who I want to associate or be close to. So your character mm. kind of in a sense, though, it kind of keeps you balanced and leveled out. That's what I'm getting from you. People are looking at how you move and stuff like that and what you're doing and willing to take yourself there. So what about you, bro? You ever been in that dark side and can't get out? I've been in the or dark. afraid. I've been in the dark side before, but I don't like it because I know I know how ruthless I can be. And I know how cold blooded I can be and just like how you said, like stepping over people to get what you want, to obtain what you get. I know I have that within me. I have that cold demeanor in me. I could just be like, yo, da da da, we find it. And it's like, you're dead to me, kind of a thing. Like, and I don't like to see people as objects because, you know, we're in this play with other mm -hmm. people. And it's like, granted, while it is good and healthy to have an ego to get where you're going, don't be like stepping over people and like destroying mm -hmm. people to like, because that's not good. And, and right. there's actually a really good show that talks about it if you haven't checked it out yet. Um, 
It's called Fall of the House of Usher. And it's one of oh, the stories okay. based off of Edgar Allan Poe. And it's, it, it grabs you, like, what this family did to get what they got. And they were so ego to... I recommend you guys watch it. Okay. Heard, the chance. Heard it heard it's, it's a, a, it's a short special. So okay. good. And the repercussions you pay in the end for it, eventually, we all have to answer for something that we did. Right. You know, and that's, that's what I got to say. Yo, bro. I, I mean, think this has been a great topic. And, bros, this has been a great topic. Mm -hmm. And I like this. I won't say we need to revisit because yes, they're going to hit us episode, in the chat. Bro. They're going to hit us up. We well, always what get it. But don't we gotta hold ourselves accountable? We've been talking yeah. about accountable. We gotta hold ourselves accountable to close up. Yes. Yeah. So, so but I would say what I will say is that you have to have a balance with this ego. Mm -hmm. It's it's a constant. You're like on this tightrope. You gotta find your way to just stay in the middle. Sometimes you have to tap one side. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to tap the other side. And I just want to thank you guys for rocking with us, liking, yes. share, comment. Hi, my name is Micaiah. Will you join me? Wise guy here. And I got a few thoughts about what we talked about tonight. We talked about going on with your ego. We talked about being able to control your emotions. And I know it's not always easy, but if you really want to get anywhere in life, if you really want to grow, become the man or the woman that you want to be, you got to learn how to control your emotions. You got to learn how to get your ego in check. As Micaiah said, it's about balance. It's okay to be wrong and it's okay to make mistakes. But as long as you got your ego in check, and as long as you know how to control your emotions at the right time, you'll be good. Wise guy here, signing off.